Hi, welcome back to this video series on cryptography. In the previous segment, we talked about performing padding oracle attack on the counter mode. In particular, we talked about how a padding oracle can, can be used to compute the length of the plain text, okay, without having the cryptographic key, of course. Uh, we did the demo um, mostly manual, right? We just manipulated individual bytes of the ciphertext and uh, manually walked through that. It was quite tedious. So in this segment, I will show you a demo of how we can automate that. So uh, the idea is still the same. Um, we will start modifying the um, last, last block. So remember the way the counter mode works is that you have your message partitioned into, into different blocks, right? Yeah, each block uh, is 128 bit if you are talking about AES. Um, so, so you have first block uh, encrypted using the counter, right? We have counter, the counter value is a random number or it can be a number zero, one. It need not be random. It has to be unique though, okay? We talked about how counter mode actually works in many segments. So I will quickly summarize it here just for the continuity purpose, okay? Um, so it, it'll give you, give you back some random number here, um, which becomes the key stream, right? This is key stream of random numbers. Uh, again, also 128 bit, it, if you are talking about AES, which is the case in my scenario. And then your first block of message, the first 128 bit of the message will be uh, XORed with your uh, key stream, right? and you get back, um, the output is ciphertext. So this is your first block of ciphertext. Okay, so this is the, the key stream, and this is the message, okay, the first block of message. Let me call it M1. Okay, and the second block of messages is, is essentially the same. Uh, you can copy this whole thing. Um, it is counter plus one, uh, encrypted very quickly. I uh, will show you, this is your FK, the pseudo random function, it can be AES for example. Counter plus one, you feed in counter plus one. The reason why counter plus one works is that um, since FK is a pseudo random function, changing a bit usually uh, changes a lot of bits in the output. Therefore, the resulting key stream is also random um, here, right? Random 128 bit key stream. Again, you will be doing XR with your uh, message block uh, two, right? This is your message block two and so on. And uh, if if the message block is smaller than the, the key stream, uh, you will truncate the necessary bytes. It doesn't matter whether you're truncating the least ones or the uh, most significant ones from the key stream. Uh, you will be doing an XR of these two and then you get out another block of ciphertext. So this is basically, it need not be a full block, as I said, it depends on how the, uh, what is the size of the message. Let's assume the size is not a multiple of the block size. That's where we add pad, padding. We talked about padding, okay? Um, in, I request you to watch the previous segment if, uh, if you're not uh, familiar with the notion of padding I talked about. Okay, so in the padding oracle attack, the idea is to corrupt the ciphertext, right? You get two blocks of ciphertext, C1, C2 in this case. The idea is to corrupt the ciphertext, get feedback about the padding, and then learn about the message or properties of the message. So the property that I am going to learn in this segment is the length of the plain text. Okay, so let me directly show you a demo because we did manual demo last time. So I'll, I'll now run uh, automation uh, and then I'll talk about the design ideas that you, you may try. So uh, here is my padding oracle length demo program, right? And uh, what it does is um, it's going to uh, take a secret, which is the, the plain text, right? Oops. Sorry for that. Um, so the, the plain text that I'm going to encrypt is extremely simple. Say A, B, or guess. <laughs> How many characters? There are five characters. Let's see whether the padding oracle can, can be used to predict the length five, okay? So first we initialize the padding oracle for the attacker. So the attacker can, initial, can interact with our oracle. He can send query to the oracle and the oracle will decrypt whatever cipher text he presents, except the challenge cipher, of course. And, uh, um, you can see here, this is the, this is the challenge cipher text. Uh, he captured the traffic, for example. You can imagine like this. 
now uh, uh, this corresponds to guess, but he doesn't know guess, okay? So he only knows this. So what he does is he modif modifies the first byte of the ciphertext. You can see here the remaining bytes remain, remain the same. The other bytes are the same. And uh, there was no pad padding oracle error. That means his first byte um, or, or the first byte of the ciphertext is not part of the padding calculation, right? Otherwise we would have got a padding oracle error because we modify the ciphertext. Uh, he does the same now with this. He modifies the second um, byte of the um, of the ciphertext, and uh, he doesn't. He's not getting any padding error. Also, that means uh, it's not part of the. It's very likely not part of the uh, padding calculation. So he does the same byte by byte, and um, he he uh, he gets an error. At, uh, after he finishes five steps, so here step one, two, three, four, five, right? And during the sixth attempt, when he was modifying the sixth byte, he got, he got an error message. That means the, the the plain text length must be five. Otherwise, we would have got an error message earlier, right? We didn't get an error message earlier. Now we got it. So we can be confident that our guess is correct. Okay. So uh, what is the demo uh, telling us? The demo is telling us that if, if there is a padding oracle, um, properties uh, of both the plain text can be uh, learned by just manipulating the ciphertext, submitting the manipulated ciphertext, you get feedback. And then he, in this case, it's, it's extremely simple. He starts man manipulating the first byte, uh, he submits the modified ciphertext, and uh, he checks whether um, the, the modification is resulting in any padding error or not. If it is not resulting in a padding error, then he knows that particular byte is not part of padding calculation. Okay, and that's how he learns the length of the plain text. So let me talk a little bit about the design of this padding oracle scheme a little bit. How you could automate, you no, know, or how I was able to automate this. Okay, so what I did is basically simple. I created uh, a padding oracle class, right, which which has two arguments. Uh, the constructor has two arguments: the counter mode. Um, and the ciphertext, okay, the challenge ciphertext. So these two things are initialized by the padding oracle. The attacker is allowed to, to interact with this padding oracle. Uh, he can ask for the challenge ciphertext, and then he can ask, um, uh, please uh, decrypt this ciphertext for me and tell me whether there is any padding error or not, okay? So the program returns true or false. Uh, if there is an exception, meaning if there is a padding error, yeah, it will return true, otherwise it will return false. This is how we model the padding oracle. Okay, very simple. Attacker is allowed to call has padding error function or a method. He can submit the ciphertext and the oracle will happily decrypt ciphertext for him and give feedback whether padding was successful or not, meaning padding error happened or not. Okay, that's basically how I model the padding oracle. And the counter mode itself is initialized outside, right? Somebody has created the counter mode and give it to the padding oracle. Uh, and there is no way that the key itself is leaked here, right? The attacker is not allowed to get the key from, from, from the padding oracle. Padding oracle hides the key, that's the idea, okay? Otherwise, there's no, no point. Okay, so this is one step. And then how did we get the length? Okay, let me show you the length um, calculation, right? So the length calculation is also simple. It's similar to what we did manually. Uh, we take the ciphertext, right? Let me show you the key idea of uh, the attack. The attacker interacts with the challenge ciphertext oracle. So the oracle gives him the challenge ciphertext. And then uh, this is just for printing logging purpose. Um, then, um, of course, the, he needs to know the blocks, block cipher length. In, in practice, he has to find out what, what type of cipher is it? Is it AES or is it um, something else? What is the block length he has to find out somehow? Um, that's not a difficult thing to do anyways. So, okay. So once he knows the block, block length, uh, all he does is he, he takes uh, the first byte of the ciphertext, he puts it to zero, 00, for example. You could modify it to anything you wanted. Um, he submits it to the, um, he submits it to the uh, padding oracle and ask for a decryption. If the decryption failed, then he knows uh, the, his modification of the ciphertext was part of the padding calculation. Otherwise, the decryption wouldn't fail. So he learns uh, by correcting um, individual bytes one at a time from uh, um, zeroth byte all the way to the end of the blocks, uh, block length, right? He goes through all the bytes one by one, and then uh, he stops. Okay, um, that's basically the idea of this padding oracle um, program. So 
given a ciphertext starts from the leftmost um, uh, byte, okay, change that byte to zero, uh, submit it to the padding uh, com computation, a padding oracle rather, and check whether uh, there is a padding error because of his modification. If there is no padding error, then he knows his modification was not part of the padding computation. As soon as he hits the padding error, he has found out the length of the plain text. That's the basic idea of this, uh, this whole idea and uh, this approach. Okay, so th that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Um,